Good health to all from Rexall. Yes, it's Sunday. Time for the Bill Harris Alice Faye Show. Presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist. Taking a little time from behind the prescription counter this Sunday evening to speak for all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. They range all the way from aspirin to penicillin. And they're as fine and pure and dependable as science can make them. We independent druggists recommend them to our customers because we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. Mr. Scott of the Rexall Company is having a lawn party at his home this afternoon. Many distinguished persons have been invited, and as we look in, we find Mr. and Mrs. Scott going over their guest list. Grace, let's check the guest list once more and make sure that all the important people have been invited. Very well, dear. This is the list. Mr. and Mrs. Phil Harris, Mr. Frank Remley... No, 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 dear. (laughs) Not the names I crossed out. Just read the ones we invited. Darling, I already invited the Harrises. I think she's a charming woman. So do I. It's that Tennessee bull weevil I object to. (laughs) Must we have him? Well, I think we should. After all, he's the star of your radio program, and you're the one who hired him. I know. (laughs) I know. You signed him for two years, and he still has another year to go. Stop pouring salt on my wound. (laughs) Ever since Harris has been on the air for Rex Hall, I've been a nervous wreck. I've got pains all over. My right arm is muscle-bound. Darling, I don't follow you. What's Phil Harris got to do with your arm being muscle-bound? I'll explain. Because of me, Phil Harris is on the air every Sunday night. So? so every Monday morning, I have to write letters to 10,000 independent druggists apologizing. <laughs> now, Grace, please tell me you didn't invite that Frank Remley character. Well, I called him at his office, but I couldn't reach him. His office? <laughs> yes, dear. Mr. Harris gave me the number, but Mr. Remley was too busy to talk to me. Remley was too busy to talk to you? Yes, he was watching a television show, and the bartender wouldn't disturb him. (laughs) Well, thank goodness you couldn't reach him. Without Remley, I can stand Harris for an hour or so. Mm, I'm afraid you'll have to tolerate him a little longer than that. Mrs. Harris is lending us some garden chairs, and he's bringing them over this morning. I told him he might as well stay on for the party. Oh, goody. (laughs) A whole day with old wavy wig. Phil, will you please hurry up? We have to get those chairs over to the Scotch this morning. All right, honey. Wait till I finish my milk. I've only got about three fingers left to drink. (laughs) Phil. Phil, do you suppose the Scots invited us just because they needed chairs? Oh, don't be silly. We were probably the first ones on their guest list. 
Daddy, can we go to this party? No, I'm sorry, kids, but this is just for grown-ups. You see, they're going to have a lot of important people there. Daddy, are you important? Am I important? <laughs> Alice, you got to have a talk with this child. <laughs> She's got to be straightened out on a few things. Tell her how important I am. Go on, tell her all the things that make me important. No, you'd better tell her. You've got them memorized. <laughs> been invited to the Scotch party, Phil? I don't know, but you can bet that only the best people in town are going to be there. Oh, you weren't invited, eh, Philip? <laughs> well, looky, 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 here comes Schnucky. <laughs> For your information, I was invited, Willie. I got a resvip. A resvip? Yes, R-S-V-P, resvip. <laughs> Scotty insisted that Alice and me come to the party. He insisted, indeed. He wanted Alice, and he felt that he was forced to ask you. He's probably hoping that you won't show up. <laughs> William, why are you always so terse with me? <laughs> I've done nothing to warrant your caustic diatribe. Phil, what was that? Just a little something Ronald Coleman laid on me. <laughs> Frankie invited? No, he wasn't, honey, and I can't understand why. Well, Mr. Scott didn't invite Francis because he doesn't want him, and I hope he has sense enough to stay away. Well, don't worry about Remley. He don't go to parties where he's not wanted. He's a very sensitive guy, and he never... Co Come in! Oh, hello, Frankie. Hiya, Curly. How do you like this new suit I bought for Scott's party? Hi, Alice. Well, if it isn't little old sensitive Frankie... <laughs> Hey, Remley, I'm glad you're going. Scott sent you an invitation, huh? No. <laughs> what time are we supposed to be at the party? Francis, surely you're not serious about going to the party. Why not? Mr. Scott didn't ask you because he doesn't like you. Well, I don't like him either, but I'm not going to be petty about it. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Frankie. You can't go someplace where you're not wanted. Now, look, why don't we do this, Phil? Let Frankie come with us when we take the chairs to Mr. Scott. And when he sees Frankie, he'll probably invite him and everything will be all right. And if Mr. Scott doesn't want him, he can always leave. Sure, we'll never miss the old sourpuss. <laughs> hey, we ought to have a great time at this party. Sure we will. Hey, do you think they might ask me to sing? If they're smart, they won't. <laughs> now, just a moment, Mr. Remley. I'm tired of having you make fun of my voice. I can sing, and I'm going to show oh, you. Oh, Phil, not now. We have to get the chairs over. They can wait. I'm going to prove once and for all that I have a great voice. And I'm going to prove it right now. Go ahead. When you get through singing, call me. I'll be inside listening to the frost warnings. <laughs> Young Johnny Jones, he had a cute little boat. And all the girlies he would take for a float. Had girlies on the shore, cute little peaches by the score. But Johnny was a Weisenheimer, you know. His steady girl was Flo. And every Sunday afternoon, she'd jump in his boat and they would spoon. And then he'd row, row, row. Way up that river, he would row, row, row. A hug he'd give her then, he'd kiss her now and then. She would tell him when they'd fool around and fool around And then they'd kiss again and then they'd row, row, row Way up that river they would row, oh, 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 oh Then he'd drop both his oars, take a few more encores And then they'd row, row, row In Johnny's boat he had a cute little seat And all the kisses that he stole were so sweet And he knew just how to row he was a rowing Romeo. He had an island where the trees were so grand. He knew just where to land. Then tales of love he'd tell to flow until it was time for them to go. And then he'd row, row, row. Right up that river he would row so slow. A hug he'd give her then, he'd kiss her now and then. She would tell him when he'd fool around and fool around. Again. Way up that river he would row, just he and flow. With her head on his chest, he'd take a few measures rest, and then he'd row, 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 just he and Florence. Row, row, row right into heaven. Row, row, he had no Johnson motors, so Johnny and Flo would row, row, row.
How'd you like that, Frankie? Pretty cold in Pomona. (laughs) Ah, what do you know? How'd you like it, Alice? They're firing the smudge pots in Redlands. (laughs) Oh, come on, Phil. You and Frankie put the chairs in the car and we'll get over to the Scots, huh? Phil, Mr. Scott's car is in the driveway, so you'd better park out front here. Okay, I'll park right here. All right, come on, Frankie. Give me a hand with these chairs. Oh, I don't... hello there. Oh, hiya, Chief. Hello, Mr. Scott. Uh, it's good to see you. I must say you look charming. You know, you get younger and prettier every day. How do you do it? I owe it all to clean living. <laughs> yes. Someday, I might make my secret of eternal youth available to the public. Oh, what a magnanimous gesture. (laughs) Mrs. Harris, I'm glad you and your uh, man of tomorrow (laughs) could uh, come over early. As long as I'm here early, I'll go in and see if I can help Mrs. Scott. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Harris, can I help you take the chairs out of the car? No, I brought someone along to help me. Yeah, I'm here, Scotty. Oh. I guess we all have days when we should have stood in bed. I hear you're having a party today, Scotty. I said I hear you're having a party today. Maybe if I don't answer, he'll go away. I, uh, I didn't get an invitation in the mail. Could it be because it was misaddressed? Or maybe you didn't put a stamp on it. I can't imagine why I didn't get it. Could it be because I didn't send you one? Uh, You and your wild guesses. (laughs) Mr. Scott, uh, I brought Frankie along because I knew you'd want him here. After all, what would a party be like without Francis? I don't know, but we're going to find out. (laughs) Mr. Scott, let's not beat around the bush. If you don't want me, say so. I don't want you. <laughs> Let's go around the bush once more. <laughs> there must be a solution to this problem. There is. You can go home. <laughs> no, that don't appeal to me. <laughs> Remley, I'm warning you. If you insist on staying here, I'm leaving. That's the most sensible suggestion you made yet. <laughs> Remley, if you don't get out of here, I'll call... Now, wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's not fight. Now, can't we settle this thing amicably? (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Scott, I think it would be nice if you, the boss, invited Frankie the employee to your social gathering. It would prove something. What? (laughs) Well, it would show the world that labor and capital can travel hand in hand to an ultimate utopia. Look, I Just don't because want... our ideologies are different don't man, we mean we can't live in the same world together? But Let's I... foster brotherly love. The spirit of true Americanism is at stake here. Yeah, uh, remember the Maine. Yeah. And remember the Alamo. <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, not forget what they fought for at Aproprata Protomax. <laughs> don't forget that this is the land of the free. Where uh, all men are created equal. From every stand any more of this. Harris, would you mind carrying the chairs down in back of the house? We're holding the garden party around the swimming pool. Okay, Mr. Don't worry, we'll take care of everything. Remley, as long as you insist on staying, you will have to excuse me. I have to go down the street to see somebody. (laughs) Who? My lawyer. I want to know if I can get an injunction against you. (laughs) Goodbye. (laughs) Good old Scotty, I knew he'd invite me. (laughs) Well, come on, Frankie. Let's carry these chairs down to the pool. Okay, I'll... Hey, Curly, the pool's at the bottom of that steep hill. With all these chairs, we'll have to make a few trips. Why don't we just drive your car now? That's a good idea. We can just... Yeah, but wait a minute. We'd have to move Scott's car out of the driveway. I'll tell you, look, Remley, you drive his car down to the garage, and I'll go get mine. Okay. Hey, Curly, I can't drive Scott's car down. There's no key in it. 
Friendly, you don't need a key. It's on a hill. You can coast it down. Just release the handbrake. Oh. There she goes, Curly. Now what do I do? <laughs> oh, no, Remley, you were supposed to get in the car. <laughs> you just told me to release the handbrake. You didn't tell me to get in. Well, look at the way it's rolling down. Remley, do something. Stop it. Stop it, he said. Hey, car! Come back here! Remley! Now, come on, we gotta try and catch it. Hey, look, it's heading for the fence. That ought to stop it. It didn't. <laughs> Cheap lumber, I guess. Remley, it's heading for the pool. Well, that ought to stop it. It can't possibly go any further. Told you that would stop it. <laughs> right into the water. Don't worry. It's a new Cadillac. With those fish tails, it should be able to swim. <laughs> Remley, it ain't swimming. It's sitting on the bottom. I ought to take him. Temper, you to temper. <laughs> Let's not get excited. We got a simple problem. All we got to do is figure how to get a Cadillac out of a swimming pool. That's all we got to figure. That's all. All we got to do is to write General Motors and ask them how to salvage one of their convertible submarines. <laughs> Frankie, we got to get it out of there before somebody discovers it. If we ever get Phil, caught with that thing... I'll fix uh-oh, here comes Hank, the night watchman. <laughs> Phil, what was that crash I heard out here? It sounded like... Phil! There's a car in the pool. Carpool? <laughs> Don't be silly, honey. Well, they haven't had carpool since the war ended. <laughs> Why, it's Mr. Scott's Cadillac. How did it get in there? He's a very sloppy parker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you see, he parks his car in the pool every night. And that way, when he leaves in the morning, it's already washed. <laughs> Cut it out. Did you fellas do this? Well, uh, well, we might as well tell her the truth, Remley. Yeah, I guess we'll have All right, all right. How did it happen? Well, Mr. Scott left his car standing out in the hot sun. I see. And it got overheated, so it went in for a dip. <laughs> oh, Alice, do you expect us to believe that? <laughs> Yeah, look, honey, you're going to have to come up with a better excuse than that. Now, just how did you get that car in the pool? Well, I was talking to Mrs. Scott, and... Wait a minute, I didn't do anything. <laughs> oh, fellas, I don't know how you got it in there, but you'll have to get it out before Mr. and Mrs. Scott see it. How? Well, use our car and tow it out. So, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Now, look, honey, you can win to keep Mrs. Scott occupied so she doesn't see what we're doing. All huh? right, but make sure you get that car out. Hmm. Mother wanted me to marry a lawyer. Father wanted me to marry a doctor. But did I listen? Nah. I had to be a wise guy and wind up with a trap drummer. <laughs> well, I had my own ratchet. <laughs> Come on, Ratch, let's get your car. Remley, look, I've been thinking about something. What? My car's too light to pull that heavy car out of that pool. Yeah, you might... Wait a minute, look. Scott's got another car in the garage, a big Lincoln. <laughs> Lincoln? Yeah, that ought to be able to pull it out. Yeah. Now, look, I'll get a heavy chain out of my trunk and you back the Lincoln up to the pool. Huh? Oh, Remley, wait a minute. What's the matter? Back it, I said, up to it, not in it. <laughs> We got the chain around the rear axle of the Lincoln. All we got to do now is put the other end of the chain around the bumper of the Cadillac. That's all. Well, which one of us is going to dive down and attach it? That's simple. You. <laughs> it ain't that simple. I ain't going. <laughs> Why'd you do it? I can't swim. Then you're the guy to do it. You'll get down to the bottom faster. <laughs> now, look, Remley, somebody's got to go down there. Go and that's somebody else. I ain't no fish. I ain't... Here. Well, if it ain't Julius, the Barracuda. <laughs> Little carp face himself. Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys up to? Why you got that Lincoln on the lawn? Because we got a Cadillac in the pool. Oh, that's different. 
You got a what and a where? We got a Cadillac and a pool. Oh, I got to report these guys to the juvenile authorities. They just do these things to derange my immature brain. Keep telling you that we got a car in the pool. Now, if you don't believe it, look for yourself. Yeah, bend over the pool and look straight down. Let me see. Hey, you guys ain't kidding. Curly's bending over. So he is. Shall we, Conga? Let's. One, two, three, kick! Ah! <laughs> look at that. He went right straight down. Yeah. <laughs> Down there. Hey, Remley. Huh? Quick, while he's still on the bottom, throw him the chain. Yeah. Oh, look, he's surfacing. Yeah. Man the harpoon. Yeah. Right. What are you, a couple of wise guys or something? Julius, as long as you're swimming, do us a favor. Dive down to the bottom and attach the chain to that bumper. Go bang your heads together. Yeah. I'm getting out of this pool. Not until you attach this chain. Don't tell me what to do. I'm climbing out of here. Quit stopping. Will you put the chain on? All right, all right, you monsters. Probably safer down there anyway. Here I go. Hey, Remley. Huh? How long do you think it'll take him? Oh, he'll be down there about ten minutes. Can a person stay underwater that long? Sure. And stay alive? Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> hey, look, he's coming up already. Oh. <coughs> well, I got it attached. Thanks, kid. You can come on out now. I'll get even, witches. One of these days, if I stay away from you guys, I'm going to grow up. And when I do... Oh, stop peeping, will you? Shake the water out of you. Look, Julius, Frankie and me are going to get the Lincoln and start pulling that Cadillac up. Now, you stay here and let us know how it's coming out. Okay. Fellas, the best way to do this is leave a little slack in the chain and then start with a sudden jerk. Wait a minute. <laughs> Listen, kid, don't tell me how to do this. I'm a grown man, and I know more about it than you do. Now, come on, Frankie, get in. Yeah. <laughs> How are you going to do this, Curly? I got it all figured out. The best thing to do is to leave a little slack in the chain and then start with a sudden jerk. <laughs> Let her go. Hang on, here we go. Right. Hey, Remley, we must be getting it out. We're moving. Yeah? She's awful heavy, though. It's dragging. Hey, Curly, isn't the lawn level here? Yeah. Why is the car pointing uphill? <laughs> Why? You better come back here and get your rear wheels. <laughs> rear wheels? Oh, Frankie, what did you do? Let's get out and look. Oh, Remley, look, we ripped out the whole rear end out of this car. You did it again, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it plural. We did it. Now, what are we going to tell Mr. Scott? Don't tell him anything. Maybe he won't notice it. <laughs> he won't notice it. How can he help it? Look at the way it's squatting. <laughs> What are you laughing at? Mr. Scott's got the only link and it starts from a crouching position. <laughs> now, Peter, will you kid get going? We're in enough trouble. Uh oh, Remley, here comes Scotty. He's gonna murder us when he's Remley, sees I just saw my lawyer and he said I can't do a thing. So I fired him. But I've got half a mind. You got half a Lincoln, too. <laughs> talking. Oh, no! What happened to my car? Is something wrong with it? <laughs> something wrong? Half of it's here and half of it's down there. Look at it. <laughs> yeah, it looks a little bit like a dachshund. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my beautiful $6,000 special Lincoln cut in half. What can I do with it? Do what the Santa Fe does with the chief. Run it in two sections. <laughs> Oh, you two, I'll, I'll take care of you later. Right now, I'd better tow this out of the driveway before my guests come. I'll get my Cadillac. I... My Cadillac. It was over in the group. Where's my Cadillac? Oh, that's in the pool. <laughs> oh, in the pool. In the pool! Oh, no! No, no, no! 
no. My Cadillac in the pool. My Lincoln torn in half. Both my cars ruined. What am I going to do? Sell your house and move near a bus stop. <laughs> You're responsible for this. I'm in no condition to have a party. But at least I'll have the pleasure of taking care of you two. Come here. <laughs> He's not having a party. We might as well go, Colonel. Yeah, ain't no sense in hanging around. So long, Scotty. Come back here. Come. No. He didn't want me before, so I'm not going to stay now. And if Frankie can't stay, I'm not going to stay either. All I want to do is get my hands on you. Curly's gaining on us. If I catch you, I'll tear you limb from limb. I'll rip you apart. I'll throttle you with my fair hands. Full speed ahead, Rimley. Come back, you coward! Oh, Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But first, here's your Rexall family druggist. Everyone knows that vitamins are necessary to life, but a lot of people don't know how scientists measure these mysterious substances to be sure they're present in vitamin products in the proper quantity. The other day I told a customer that in Rexall's laboratory, certain vitamins are measured by seeing how brightly they glow. Glow? What on earth do you mean? (laughs) Just what I said, ma'am. Rexall's men of science can check small amounts of certain vitamins in a product by determining how much light they give off. Look, I know Rexall scientists are good, but this you've got to explain. Well, here's how it's done. First, the vitamin is treated with a chemical that makes it fluorescent under ultraviolet light. In other words, it glows. I'm with you so far. Then it's placed in a machine where a photoelectric cell, you might call it an electric eye receives this glow and transmits it in terms of electricity to a special kind of meter. The amount of electricity registered on this meter is the exact measurement or weight of the vitamin. Believe it or not, this method can measure vitamin substances down to one gamma. And that, ma'am, is one twenty-eight millionth of an ounce. No wonder you never hesitate to recommend Rexall drug products. Me and 10,000 other independent Rexall druggists, ma'am. And it's only natural. You see, we know that all of the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company get the same kind of up-to-the-minute testing, the same patient painstaking care. That's why in every store with the orange and blue Rexall sign on the windows, there's a family druggist who will tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Well, Phil, you and Frankie really messed up Mr. Scott's party yesterday. I wonder what he's going to do with his two cars. He's trying to sell them. He's got an ad here in the paper. Look, it says, for sale cheap, a disjointed Lincoln and a waterlogged Cadillac. (laughs) Hey, do you think he's mad at me and Frankie? I think so, dear. Look what it says underneath. For sale, even cheaper, one left-handed guitar player and a curly-headed band leader. (laughs) He can't sell Remley. He belongs to me. This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were Lois Corbett and Gail Gordon. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Alice Fay appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. This is Bill Foreman wishing good health to all from Rexall. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.